Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make the Mother Earth bracelet. This fun multi-strand bracelet is the perfect way to show your love for the planet. Let's take a look at the products and tools we'll need to make it. For this project, we will be using size 11 matte opaque oxblood round Japanese seed beads. I've got a 5 millimeter silver nugget hishi spacer beads by Tierra Cast. Then I have 4 millimeter poppy jasper round gemstone beads. I've got a 6 millimeter African jade round gemstone bead. And then I have these cute 10 millimeter rock creek jasper short simple cut gemstone beads. I have the um, 16 millimeter pewter earth button by Tierra Cast. I've got some 9 millimeter silver plated brass textured jump rings by Nun Design. Then for my crimp beads, I've got 2x2 two two crimp beads and 3.5 millimeter crimp bead covers. I'm using fine soft flex to string it all up. And then I'm going to make this fun little um, loop clasp for my button out of 1.5 millimeter natural antique um, brown leather cord. For my tools, I will be using wire cutters, chain nose pliers, and crimping pliers. You can find links to all these products and supplies in the description below. So let's get started. Okay, to begin our bracelet, I'm going to go ahead and attach these two jump rings to the shank on the button here. So to do that, I'm going to pick up some chain nose pliers. And I'm going to go ahead and open my jump ring by pushing one side towards me, one side away from me. Then I'm just going to slide it through the shank of the button. And I'm going to go ahead and close the jump ring. And in the same fashion, I'm going to open this jump ring. And I'm going to attach it to the jump ring on the shank there. And then we're going to string our soft flex off of that last jump ring. So to do that, I'm going to grab a crimp bead and a crimp cover. Go ahead and string the crimp bead onto your soft flex. And this is an eight inch piece of soft flex that I pre-cut because we're going to be having about six inches of beaded beads on strung up there. So it'll give us plenty to crimp on each side. So string on your crimp bead string on the jump ring and then go back through your crimp bead. Again, making sure you leave a little bit of room around the jump ring. You don't want it to be too tight because it could break if it's really, really tight. Going and using your back notch first in the crimping pliers, you go ahead and crimp it one time. You turn it and flip it to the front and crimp it two more times. I always give it a little tug to make sure it's nice and secure and then I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to trim that tail off as close to the crimp bead as possible. And while I'm here I'm just going to go ahead and put on the crimp bead cover and to do that you just pick up the cover in the using the first notch and then you gently close it over the crimp bead Now, we're ready, oops, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and string this, um, start with the four millimeter poppy jasper beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and string that pattern. And that pattern is just one poppy jasper and then one seed bead. And I'm gonna do that for about six inches of length or it's gonna end up being 26 beads. And the reason, um, I'm using the seed beads in between is to kind of give the illusion of pearl knotting without all the extra work. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue stringing just one four mil and one seed bead until I have 26 beads on here. And then I'm going to start my other strands. So you can see I've got the pattern here. I'm just going to go ahead and continue that until it's six inches long or 26 beads and we'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and I strung 26 beads or about six inches um, of beads onto my soft flex. And now I'm ready to um, terminate my other end. So to do that, I'm going to grab up a crimp bead and then I'm gonna go through one of the jump rings that I've already closed. And then I'm gonna go back through the crimp bead. And 
I'm gonna pull everything down and make sure it's fairly snug, but make sure the bracelet has a little bit of movement in there so it's not too tight, so it doesn't put any stress on the soft flex. Same fashion as we did the other end, I'm gonna take the crimp pliers and crimp the back notch one time, and then turn and flip it to the front notch and crimp it two times. There we go, all right. Give it a little tug, it's nice and secure. Go ahead and you trim your tail, the wire cutters, set that aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on my crimp bead cover while I'm here. Same fashion as we did the other one, using that front notch. And then just gently close it over your crimp bead. If I can get the jump ring out of the way there. All right, so there, I've got my crimp bead on there. So one strand is done. Now I'm ready to do my second strand, and this is going to be the um, simple cut gemstones with um, the seed beads, spacing it out. So again, I'm just going to go ahead, grab a crimp bead, and I'm going to go ahead and string it through the jump ring that's on the button there. back through the crimp bead. Then go ahead and crimp it down once with the back notch and then do two times with the front notch. Give it a little tug. Trim your tail with your wire cutters as close to the crimp bead as possible. And then I'll just go ahead and put a cover on here because I'm working on it. And again, you can always put your crimp bead covers at the end if you like. So picking that up, going over the crimp bead here. Show that a little bit better this time. And then gently close down. All right, so now I'm ready to string my second strand. So to do that, I'm just going to pick up one of the gemstones. And this strand's a little bit different. Um, my finished bracelet here has about 10 of these gemstones, but as you can tell, because of the irregular shape of them, you may need more or less to create a six inch length of um, beads. So you'll just kind of have to adjust um, your length depending on how your style, the style and kind of the beads that you end up getting. So. Sometimes you have to grab a couple beads at the end and kind of put them on there to see if it, one will do or if you need a couple more. So I just keep stringing this pattern up of one gemstone and one seed bead. And I like to make sure that I grab a couple different variations of the color so that it gives a nice look so there's not like really dark ones next to each other versus really lights. So you have a nice like contrast there. Just keep stringing. That's a fun color. Then once I get towards the end, I kind of check to see where I'm at. So I've definitely got a little bit more, more room for more beads here. All right, let me check again, see where I'm sitting at. So it looks like I can probably do about one more bead before I'm ready to attach to that jump ring there. And these ones all look pretty narrow. That one might work, but I think I'm gonna grab one over here that I have and see if that one will fit in there and create that length. Ah, it's perfect. All right. So then I've got my length, and again, you know, just kind of pick gemstones that will work 
to get your desired length of about six inches. And just make sure it's about the same as your other strand that you already have. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crimp that onto my jump ring over here. Slide on my crimp bead, go through that jump ring, go back through the crimp bead. And you pull it, you wanna just make sure your bracelet has a little bit of movement in there. Using your back notch first, crimp one time, then turn and flip it to the front notch and crimp two more times. So it makes a nice cylinder shape. So then you can cover it with a crimp bead cover. And sometimes it flips around on you there a little bit, so you just have to keep getting in there until you get it closed down. There, finally. Okay. Gave it a tug, it's nice and secure. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tail off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a crimp bead, or a crimp bead cover to it. So gently bring it over the crimp bead and closing it down. Mine got a little wonky there. But looks like I'm able to save it. Twisting here. There. All right. So now I'm ready to do my third strand. So my third strand, it's going to be the six millimeter beads and then the he sheets. So I'm going to set up for that and I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm ready to start my third strand. So I've got my beads set up and I went ahead and attached my third um, length of soft flex. So I'm going to start out with stringing the six millimeter beads. Then I'm going to do a, spa or a seed bead spacer in between, and then so it'll be a little section of that. There'll be about 12 of those, and then I'll do a little section of the um, little nugget heishis and the seed beads, and a, a smaller little section, and that'll be about 14 of those. So I'm just going to go ahead and string these guys up. And you could always vary your pattern on this strand. You don't have to like kind of block it that way if you wanted to alternate between the gemstones and the spacers, you could definitely do something like that if you prefer. It's always fun to see how people um, take our designs and kind of change them up and make them their own and stuff. So you just go ahead and string one of each of the six mil. And as you can see, like these gemstones with the browns and everything and the greens, it's like they look really nice, very natural together. I really like this bracelet, it's a fun bracelet focusing on a lot of different gemstones. So I'm just continuing to string until I get 12 of the gemstones here. And you could even omit the seed beads if you don't like this look. You could just do the gemstones on their own. You don't have to string them seed beads in between you might end up having to add a few more if you choose to omit them just for your length to come out right but you could certainly do that if you prefer that look all right i've got two more gemstones here and then i can start adding my he -shies. All right, so I have my little section of my gemstones, and you can tell it's just gonna be a little section of the heechies. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and add another seed bead and then just pick up the little nuggets. And you're gonna add 14 of those guys. And when our bracelet is all finished, um, it will end up being about seven and a half inches long, but we're gonna make one of the um, I'm going to do an adjustable clasp there with the loop so you can have it fit two different lengths. So it's going to be fitting about a seven and a half, and then it will also fit probably about an eight, eight and a half. So that's nice if you're making a bracelet for someone and you're not exactly sure what size bracelet they prefer to wear. You can still make them something and then they'll be able to wear it because it's kind of adjusting. Almost done with all my nuggets here.
one more to do, then I am done. The strand. All right. So you can see, like, that one is ready to go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. It actually looks like mine worked out a little bit longer with these gemstones. So I'm just gonna take one, um, one of the heishis off, I think. So then I'm ready to, that's what I was kind of meaning too, is like sometimes the gemstones will vary just slightly in size. So sometimes you do have to adjust your quantity a little bit. So just always double check that it, it's the right length before you go ahead and attach it. So I'm ready to attach it to this jump ring on this end. So I slid on a crimp bead and then I'm gonna go through my jump ring and then I'm gonna come back through my crimp bead. And pull it down, but make sure it has a little bit of movement there. I'm going to go ahead and crimp it with the crimping pliers in the first in the back notch there one time and then turn it and flip it to the front notch and crimp it two more times. So you get the soldier shape. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. Trim your tail. Okay. Go ahead and just add crimp cover to that guy really quick. And then I'm gonna add the crimp cover to the front one here. I hadn't done that yet. All right, so all my stringing is done at this point now. So now I'm just ready to make this little um, loop clasp with the leather. And I'll kind of um, loop that there and show you. So what it is, is it's just you take two pieces of leather, you fold it over, tie a knot, then you put it together and you kind of measure your button and then you do your second knot. Because you want it to make sure that it's big enough to go over your button, but not too tight and not too loose that it falls off. You tie a second knot and then you can also make a second spot for a little bit longer bracelet too. And you probably could do a third if you have, if you so desire and you have that need to have a super long strand. So I have eight inches of leather that I already pre-cut that I'm going to go ahead and attach to this side. Just make sure your strands are sitting where they're supposed to there. Because on the jump ring, they can flip around a little bit. So I have it the four mil, the 10 mil, and then the six mil. So I'm gonna take my leather and I'm just gonna string it through the jump ring. And then I'm gonna bring the two pieces together so over, it's lapping, overlapping the jump ring there. And then I'm gonna just tie an overhand knot around that jump ring with the leather. Now I just make sure it's pulled down nice and tight towards the jump ring there. Give it a good tug. All right, so it's attached there. So now I'm ready to make the loop for my button. So again, using your button as the measuring that's big enough there. So I just hold it with my finger there and I'm gonna tie a knot around that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do a second knot. And as you can see, it's like eight inches is pretty short. You could probably go even with 10 inches to make it a little bit easier to make this knot. second knot there and then I always just kind of trim mine at an angle there so they're nice nice cuts and there you have your finished mother earth bracelet 
you can find all the products and other inspiration designs for this bracelet at fusionbeads.com.